Hello, primary children, and welcome to another episode of Primary Singing Time. I hope you had a beautiful Easter week with your families. I hope you enjoyed watching some wonderful sessions of General Conference. And did you hear the children singing, I am a child of God? I am a child of God, and he has sent me here, has given me a lovely home with parents kind and dear. Lead me, guide me, walk beside me. I'll bet some of you even sang along when that choir sang, I am a child of God. All right, we have a new article of faith for this month. Going backwards again, this is article number 10, which says, We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the ten tribes, that Zion, the new Jerusalem, <clears throat> will be built upon the American continent, that Christ will reign personally upon the earth, and the earth will be renewed and receive its paradisiacal glory. You know, this is a fun one. We usually sing this in the fall because we go 1 to 13, now we're going backwards. This is a fun one for spring because it talks about the earth being renewed like in springtime when the earth wakes up again and the flowers all start blooming and it just seems like a paradise all around us. Think what an even more beautiful paradise will be when Christ comes to rule on the earth. All right, you've sung it before, so let's sing it together now. of the ten tribes that Zion the new Jerusalem will be built upon the American continent that Christ will reign personally upon the earth and that the earth will be renewed and receive its do you remember that that word from last year and the year before paradisiacal it means to be like paradise i'm going to say it slowly and then i want you to say it after me paradisiacal you ready paradisiacal and what does it mean it means to be like paradise the earth will re will receive its paradisiacal glory our earth will be like paradise it will be so beautiful Okay, let's sing for the little ones, my hands. My hands upon my head I'll place, upon my shoulders, on my face, at my waist and by my side, and then behind me they will hide. Then I will raise them way up high and let my fingers fly, fly, fly. Then clap, 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 and one, two, three. Just look how quiet they <laughs> Isn't that fun when we get super quiet? But now I don't want you to do something super quiet. Well, maybe I do. I'll tell you what. I want you to say the words, God loves you with your mouth closed. Okay, I'm going to try it. You see my lips moving? Did you hear anything coming out? Let me see you try it. Okay, close your mouth. Now I want you to say with your mouth, God loves you, but nothing can come your mouth can't open at all. You ready? Let's try it together. God loves you, but your mouth has to stay closed. You ready? I didn't hear you. Did anybody else hear you? Mm -hmm. You cannot say those words with your mouth closed. At the best, it's going to come out like, mm, but we're not going to hear the words. How can we teach people the gospel if we won't open our mouths? You could know that God loves you, and you know that God loves everybody else, but here's all that's going to come out if you don't open your mouth. That's a terrible way to teach the gospel. Here's what the Savior said 
in the Doctrine and Covenants about opening our mouths. Okay, I'm going to read this. And this time, every time he says, open your mouth, I want you to stand up and open your mouth. Okay, so like if you're sitting down, okay, and then close your mouth again. And then stand up every time you hear the words, open your mouth. You ready? Here we go. Open your mouths and they shall be filled and you shall become even as Nephi of old who journeyed from Jerusalem in the wilderness. Yea, open your mouths and spare not and you shall be laden with sheaves upon your back for lo, I am with you. Yea, open your mouths and they shall repeat, be filled saying, prepare you the ways of the Lord to make his path straight for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How many times did you open your mouth? Did you open it three times? What does the Lord want you to do? Open your mouth so you can share the gospel. Because if you don't open your mouth, nobody can hear you. But how does he want you to open your mouth? Is there a particular way that he wants? Oh, you know what? I want to sing a song first about sharing the gospel. Let's sing, I want to be a missionary now. Let me remind you of the words. I want to be a missionary now. I don't want to wait till I am grown. Look at that boy in a big missionary suit. Isn't that funny? I don't want to wait till I am grown. I want to share the gospel when I'm young, for I have a testimony of my own. Like on fast Sundays, when some of you come up and bear your testimony, you have testimonies too. I want to tell my friends about the church and the happiness it brings to me because we want our friends to be happy too. I'll tell them how the gospel was restored, tell them how the Book of Mormon came to be. So you can tell them about Joseph Smith and the vision in the grove and the golden plates. Then I can be a missionary now. I don't have to wait till I am grown. I'll live each day the best that I know how, and they'll see I have a testimony of my own, a testimony of my very own. Let's sing it two times through. I want to be a missionary now. I don't want to wait till I said the words wrong. Let's start it again. I'm sorry. I don't want to wait until I'm grown. I want to make sure I sing it right for you. Ready? Okay, here we go. I want to be a missionary now. I don't want to wait until I'm grown. I want to share the gospel when I'm young, for I have a testimony of my own. I want to tell my friends about the church and the happiness it brings to me. I'll tell them how the gospel was restored, tell them how the Book of Mormon came to be. Then I can be a missionary now. I don't have to wait until I'm grown. I'll live each day. Okay, let's sing it one more time because you're still kind of learning it. I want to be a missionary now. I don't want to wait until I'm grown. I want to share the gospel while I'm young, for I have a testimony of my own. I want to tell my friends about the church and the happiness it brings to me. I'll tell them how the gospel was restored, tell them how the Book of Mormon came to be. Then I can be a missionary now. I don't have to wait until I'm grown. I'll live each day the best that I testimony of my own a testimony of my very own that's awesome you have a testimony of your very own even when you're very young and you can share the gospel with your friends but how does the lord want us to share the gospel well number one we have to open our mouths what needs to come out hmm i want to show you something about how oh let me tell you another scripture first before i show you a picture here's what the doctrine and covenant says 
The Doctrine and Covenants says, For verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye are called to lift up your voices, as with the sound of a trump, like a trumpet. And then it says, Lift up your voice as with the sound of a trump, preparing the way of the Lord for his second coming. What does that mean, to lift up your voice like the sound of a trump? Well, in the ancient scriptures, this was a trumpet. Do you see this man in biblical times? And he's blowing something. It's long and curved. That's called a shofar. And that was a ram's horn. It was the horn that came off the head of the rams and it was hollow inside. And they made instruments out of it. And I want you to listen to what that instrument sounds like. Okay, you listening? Look at the picture. because it's just one long piece of a thing, but it's so loud and it comes out with so much volume that it can be heard from a long way away. And so in ancient times, that trumpet was used to call people and to warn of danger and they used it in battle and it could be heard above everything else. And when the Lord tells us that we need to raise up our voice with the sound of a trump, he's talking about a trump like this, not just something you'd play in a band, but something that was that could be so loud it could be heard all over and that would call people as a warning to come listen to the gospel and to protect them from danger and could be even used in battle. Do you remember a primary song we sing that talks about his truth I will proclaim loudly? That's right, I belong to the church of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's go ahead and sing our song that talks about proclaiming the truth like with the sound of a trump. You ready? I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I know who I am. I know God's plan. I'll follow Him in faith. I believe in the Savior Jesus Christ. I'll honor his name, I'll do what is right, I'll follow his light, his truth I will proclaim. Okay, I want to do that song one more time. A couple of questions. What is this that we do here? What does that remind you of? Right, a missionary name tag. Good for you. Okay, so we want to be missionaries even when we're young. And then his truth, I will proclaim. I want you to sing it really loud, like you're singing it with a shofar, with an ancient trumpet calling to the world. You ready? Let's do it one more time. I belong to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I know who I am. I know God's plan, I'll follow Him in faith. I believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll honor His name. I'll do what is right, I'll follow His light. His truth I will proclaim. When you have the truth, you get to proclaim it loudly to the whole world. But but you get to proclaim loudly. That's so exciting. The things that we learn in the church can help us to stand strong in the last days before Jesus Christ's second coming. Let's look at Doctrine and Covenants 33, 14 through 17, to see how we can build a firm foundation for our faith. And this is what those scriptures say. Ye shall remember the church and the covenants to keep them, and I will bestow the gift of the Holy Ghost and the Book of Mormon and the Holy Scriptures are given of me for your instruction. Wherefore, be faithful, pray.
praying always. What were the things that that scripture said we need to do to stand strong in the last days? Well, it started with keeping covenants. When you take the sacrament, you are keeping your baptismal covenants and preparing for baptism. And receiving the Holy Ghost, and not just receiving the Holy Ghost, but listening. How do you hear the Holy Ghost? It's a still small voice, and where do you hear him? In your mind, and where else? In your heart. That's right, so listening to the Holy Ghost, and when you hear the gift of the Holy Ghost, when you hear the Holy Ghost speak, what do you need to do? You need to do what he says, because it's no help if you don't. So keeping covenants, listening to the Holy Ghost, I hope you can see all of these, and scriptures. The Lord said the Book of Mormon and the Holy Scriptures are for our instruction. That means you need to read them to be instructed by them. Does it do you any good if your scriptures sit on a shelf? No. Does it do you any good if somebody else reads scriptures instead of you? Not unless they're reading them to you. You need to read the scriptures and you know more than that, you need to know the scriptures. They're for your instruction. That means it's like a school book. So learn your scriptures. And then what's something else that you need to do to stand up? Oh, did, did you say prayer? That's right. Some of you got that. To pray. When do we need to pray? What did it say? Always. That's right. You need to pray always. Always have a prayer in your heart. Talking to Heavenly Father to pray always. And then you have a firm foundation for your faith. I'm going to hold those up just in case you can see them all very well. Okay, can you see them all now? Okay, what were they again at the bottom? To make and seek, to make and keep sacred covenants like baptismal covenant. And when you go to the temple, keep those covenants. Keep your covenants. Keep your promises to God. And then what's the next one? That's right, to listen to the Holy Ghost. And what do you need to do when the Holy Ghost speaks? What do you need to do about it? You need to do what he says. That's right. Okay, what's the next one? Very good. You need to read the scriptures and know the scriptures. That's your textbook. That's your school book. Okay, and then what's what's another one? To pray. How? When? Always. To always have a prayer in your heart. And then you will have a firm foundation and you can stand strong in the last days before the second coming. And, oh, let's sing a song about a firm foundation. I know a song that we have. Can you remember it? It talks about somebody built their house on a rock and somebody else built their house not on a rock, on a sandy foundation. Do you remember one of the conference talks? Talked about building your house strong on the rock. They even talked about the song. Let's sing The Wise Man and the Foolish Man. One time through, because we know this very well. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood still. But the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand washed away. Because the Lord wants us to build our house on a rock and he said that the gospel and revelation are his rock. And if we build a firm foundation, we won't wash away when the rains come down and the floods come up. And here's our firm foundation. When we build our faith on our firm foundation so we don't get washed away by the storms, and when we proclaim the gospel and share it with our friends because we love the scriptures and we love the Savior, we are following Jesus Christ in faith. 
Let's sing the song, I'll Follow Him in Faith. Let's sing it twice through. We'll do it one time with pictures and then the second time with some actions. Are you ready? I love this song. I tell you that every time I sing it, because you know what? I love this song. The Lord has blessed me with gospel truth. I have learned His ways in my early youth. I will share my life, for I know it's right to testify of Him. The Lord has blessed me with simple faith. If I pray for help, He will give me strength. I will do Okay, let's sing that first again. You ready? The Lord has blessed me with gospel truth. I have learned his ways in my early youth. I will share my life. I know it's right to testify of him. The Lord has blessed me with gospel truth. I have learned his ways in my early youth. I will share my light, for I know it's right to testify of him. The Lord has blessed me with simple faith. If I pray for help, he will give me strength. I will do his work, I will gladly serve. I'll follow him in faith. When we keep the commandments, when we stand on a firm foundation, and when we show others how to do that, we are following Jesus Christ. And you know what we're being? Just by the example of our lives, we're being missionaries. I love Jesus Christ. I'm so glad for this Easter season that we've had to remember him. And I love you and hope you have a great week.